support team. Tonight, we bring you out of Asia to the Pearl of Africa. Our speaker, Johnny Kamugisha of Johnny Uganda Safaris, will fulfill your dreams and walk us through the beauty of Uganda, its birds, mammals, and much, much more. Good evening, Johnny. How are you? All right. Good evening, uh, Mike. And how are you doing? Ooh, every, everyone's excited to listen to you. There's so many people on Zoom tonight from all over. So uh -huh. if you're ready, show us Uganda. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you are most welcome, everyone, to my presentation. I am uh, Johnny Kamujisha from Uganda, one of the top bad guys in Uganda, if I may say. And uh, uh, Uganda is uh, one beautiful country sitting in the heart of Africa. It is one of the countries that sits on the equator. But sitting on the equator does not mean that it's very hot. It's got uh, an average uh, temperature of between 18 and 28 degrees Celsius. And we have only two seasons. We never see winter, but we see rainy season and dry season. So you can imagine that uh, temperature throughout the year. So most of the country is always green. We have got uh, snow on top of the mountains every day throughout the year and so it's going to be a healing and very rewarding experience that i will take you through uganda has got various kinds of uh, habitats and so i would want to show you from the map of africa just in case if you can see my cursor, you see the red beads. This is where Uganda is. But then I will narrow it a little bit and take you to East Africa. That's where Uganda lies. And then when I narrow it a little bit more, I bring you to the country, Uganda itself. And so it has got uh, neighbors in the north right now is uh, Southern Sudan or South Sudan. In the east, we neighbor with Kenya. In the west, we neighbor with Democratic Republic of Congo. And in the south, we neighbor with Tanzania and Rwanda. But Uganda has got a lot to offer. It is um, almost the size of uh, Great Britain or United Kingdom, if I may say, very small. 236,040 square kilometers with 84.6% uh, of that being the land and then 15.4 is water. And um, it has got a lot to offer, which is culture, mammals, and uh, since it is the ABF, I will talk about birds. We've got mm -hmm. over 1,000 70 different bird species. But to take you back a little here, we have 10 national parks. And those are the green bits that you see at the moment. In the Northeast, we have Depot. In the East, we have Mount Elgon. Then Murchison Falls Hello. National Park, Semliki, Kibale, Renzori, Queen Elizabeth, Windy, Mugahinga Gorilla National Park and Lake Mburo National Park. On top of that, we have 12 wildlife reserves. So when you see these green bits, don't think that the rest is uh, dry. Remember I told you it's green throughout the yard. So we've got other wildlife reserves and several other forests. I thought I would show you some of the forests, how they look like. Because most of the time we bird in national parks, protected areas, although we have uh, forest reserves that we bird in as well. 
but this is Bwindi, where you go to see the mountain gorillas. It's called Bwindi Impenetrable National Park, and that's how it looks like. I have a friend called Victor Yu. He's been there tracking the gorillas, so he knows that this is how the forest looks like. But we have various kinds of forest. This one is in the high altitude, and this is Semliki, which is in the low, the Rift Valley actually, quite low. And this is how it looks like. But it's one good uh, budding area as we will be moving, as you will see. Some of the forests look like that. That is right at the top of the canopy. And then we have savanna that look like that. Like that. That's how some of the savannas look like. So back to the um, main thing. Uganda has got 1,070 plus different bird species. But surprisingly, it has got only one endemic, which is that bird you're looking at, the fox's weaver. It's the only Ugandan endemic. But then it has got what we call Albertine Rift endemics, like I'll be showing you. So some people come specifically to see that bird. Although there's another bird that every person, whether they have come to see mammals or only gorillas, they want to see that bird. And that is where that is where uh, people who have got your mics on, please mute yourselves because I'm hearing uh, echoes. So usually our trips start from a place called Mabamba Wetlands. That is our birding trips. And I was saying that nowadays, whether people come to see only gorillas or the mammals, they add in that day to go and see this dinosaur, the prehistoric looking bird, the shoebill because that's where most of its food is, the lungfish that you see in its beak. And it's right opposite the airport. So you arrive at the airport in the evening and in the morning you are in the wetlands. You drive a little bit buying, budding along and you go to look at this bird. The area is a wetland with several other water birds, like the blue-headed kukal that inhabits only the papyrus. Lots of pied kingfishers. This is our national bird, the gray crown crane. Lots of ducks, like the yellow billed, white faced whistling duck, falvas, and stuff. Lots of herons, like the giant one, the Goliath heron. Different gulls and terns, different egrets as well. This is where we tend to concentrate on looking for the lesser jacana, and that's where you find the African jacana as well squawk herons and lots of other birds. And after being on the boat, motorized boat, looking for the shoebill and several other water birds, we tend to do a walk as well on the land to look for other birds that you can find on the land like turacos and cisticolas and weavers. In a day after arriving, by the time you get back to Entebbe, you are likely to go home with 120 plus different species in one day. So Uganda is uh, indeed uh, the pearl of Africa. So I said we have uh, 10 national parks. I'll take you through a few. This is the one I showed you in the top right corner of the map, the Kidepo Valley National Park, which is uh, for uh, the, the size of it is one, 1,442 square kilometers, and it has 470 plus different species of birds with 85 different mammals. Some people have heard about Ngorongoro. This is what we call the Ngorongoro of Uganda. When you are there, you are more or less like in a basket between mountains and hills, but it's quite a scene to be too. With the good thing with Uganda, where you go birding, whether it's in a forest or in the savanna, you are looking at birds and looking at mammals as well. 
So that's one reason I mixed in some of these mammals that we tend to see in other places. It's in Kidepo and one of the reserves called Pianupe that you are able to see the cheetah. Lots of elephants, lots of buffaloes, giraffe, lion, Uganda cob, and lots of other mammals. And that's where we go to look for, excuse me, the common ostrich. Different kinds of small hornbills, red billed, yellow billed, and stuff. Yellow billed shrike, several different rollers, fan tailed raven, different kinds of vultures like this white headed vulture, clapperton's francolin, yellow throated francolin, or you can call it yellow throated sparfowl, and several other birds like uh, black breasted babbit. That's why I tend to go look for it. Karamoja palis, you go looking for it over there. It's an easy place to get the white crested turaco and several other birds in that area. But it's one place that I would recommend someone to visit. Some people who go there tend to connect to Machison, which is our biggest national park which is uh, 4,000 square kilometers. It has 451 plus, because I still believe there are several other birds that have never been discovered in that place. But for now, I'd say 451 different species of birds and 76 different mammals. Different habitats. It has got a forest. Budongo Forest uh, touches uh, Murchison Falls. We do water cruises on the mighty River Nile and then in the savannah, where you see several other mammals, like I said earlier, and uh, different kinds of birds. I know in North America they've got what they call cardinals, but we haven't been elevated to that level of a cardinal. We have bishops. <laughs> And this one is one of the bishops, the Northern Red Bishop. In Murchison, you may be able to get a black winged Red Bishop, but in the country itself, we have Black Bishop, the one I tend to call Desmond Tutu. We've got Yellow Bishop, we've got Southern Red Bishop, Yellow Crowned uh, Bishop, and several others in that same family. In Kidepo, you saw the Clapperton's Francolin. Here there is this one, which is uh, Huglin's francolin, there is crested francolin, red wing francolin, and several other francolins in the area. Again, in Murchison, when you do a boat cruise to the delta, that is the opposite, opposite direction of the falls, you see the shoebill. You may see them actually before the delta on different small islands, but what I'm trying to say is you again are able to see a shoe bill in Murchison, because sometimes we see them while on the vehicle again, right? There's one beautiful bird called the saddle bill stock here with uh, the Kuching flag or the Ugandan flag, black, yellow, red, as you can see. We've got the beautiful secretary bird here, which was being mobbed by the sparring lapwing. One big bastard known as the Denham's bastard. We've got several bee eaters up there. The Northern Command bee eater. To a point that nowadays, when you find a big flock of uh, Northern Command bee eaters, you are likely to find Southern Command bee eater, which is supposed to be in Southern Africa, but how they flew to look for their cousins. Nobody knows, but now we tend to see them with Northern Kamen bee eaters in Murchison. One beautiful bee eater up there as well, known as the red-throated bee eater. A female Abyssinian ground hornbill. And several other birds in Murchison, like Batalua, Grayish Eagle Owl, Grey Kestrel, one of the strong, powerful eagles, the martial eagle, gray-headed kingfisher, swallowtail bee eater, 
that's a male Abyssinian ground hornbill. As you go towards the falls, that's the boat that takes you to the bottom of the falls, but we've got different size of boats that we use, especially when we are bird watching, we take smaller ones so that, you know, the bird watchers are not mixed with other people so that you enjoy the bird watching. So as you go to close to the falls, that's where you find this small beautiful bird known as the rock pratinko. We've got various kinds of lapwings in Uganda. That's the long-toed lapwing. This is the black-headed lapwing. Earlier we saw the Denham's bustard. This is the black-bellied bustard. We've got various kinds of bustards, especially in Kidepo that I showed you earlier. And one beautiful night jar here known as the standard winged night jar. That when you show it to clients the first time, they tend to think that it's one big bird being chased by two small birds because of the wings following it. Again, like I said, in Murchison, we have, I would still say plus 76 different mammals. And so as you're bird watching, you are looking at different kinds of mammals. And actually Murchison has got the biggest number of Rothschild giraffes in the world. So you wouldn't miss the Rothschild giraffe if you came to Uganda and you visited Murchison. And, uh, you know, to give you a bigger sized uh, northern common bee eater, just in case you want to have a look at it. And then I will take you down to Chibale Forest National Park, which is uh, a very small forest national park of 776 square kilometers with 350 different birds and 70 different mammals. Now, Chibale is known as the primate capital of the world. It is one national park with uh, 13 different primates. I know this is uh, Asian bird fair, but you remember I told you where we do our birding. We are looking at different other mammals. So I am happy to talk about other creatures in the areas that we visit. 13 different mammals in one national park, nowhere else in the world. That is where our cousin, the chimpanzee, is seen. They are habituated and everyone who goes there goes to see them. We've got Guereza colobus, popularly known as black and white colobus, Uganda red colobus, some people call it the red colobus. And back to our main one, we've got one beautiful robin chat here because we've got different kinds of robin chats, but this is one of them, the red cap robin chat. We have over 25 different green bulls in Uganda. And this beautiful one is one of them called Joyful Green Bull. This is a lowlander palace, which used to be known as Master Palace. We have lots of different kingfishers. And this is one of them, which lives in the forest. It's blue-breasted kingfisher. You know, the name depicts it to be feeding on fish but some of the kingfishers don't feed on fish, and this is one of them. The others could be chocolate barked, pygmy, uh, dwarf, because they live in forests. They feed on insects, lizards, frogs, and stuff like that. They never feed on fish. But then when you come to this beautiful one, the shining blue kingfisher, it feeds on fish, just like the others, the malachite and pied that live next to the water. We have one beautiful bird here. It's a cuckoo known as the emerald cuckoo. When you find it on good light, this yellow is glittering and the green is glittering like velvet. If you are interested in butterflies, Chivale again is one place you need to go to to look for butterflies. And actually Johnny wrote, uh, a small book called uh, Introduction to Butterfly Watching in Uganda with his uh, friend, uh, Professor Roger. 
Roger way. So if you can, you would use that to take you through butterflies of Uganda to identify them easily. That's a bigger image of the blue-breasted kingfisher. And then there's one interesting national park called Semliki, which is uh, again small, 20, 220 square kilometers. And uh, it's got uh, 400 different bird species that uh, include hornbills that, you know, birds have got wings, but there are some of these birds that will not move from Semliki and stay right there. And so it's got several hornbills that live there that don't move from there, like the dwarf hornbill, white crested hornbill, black cast wattled hornbill. And then we've got several other birds, the rufous sided broadbill, the beautiful chestnut wattle eye, brown throated wattle eye. And this tinkerbird also does not move from Semliki. If you want to see it, you have to go to Semliki. It's behind the Renzori Mountains that I talked about. And so you would have to drive along the Renzori Mountains to get to that place, but you would enjoy it. Now, one popular national park is Queen Elizabeth National Park, which was gazetted in 1952 and was officially opened in 1954 by the Queen, Queen Elizabeth herself, as a young girl, a young, beautiful girl. And it is uh, 1,978 square kilometers. And listen to this, over 600 bird species. Imagine that, one national park with 10% of the total number of birds of Africa. And uh, again, it's got a forest habitat of forest habitats. It is a savanna park. It has got water bodies. And you can see the reason why it has got several different species, 600 plus. I have seen several people that come wanting to see the African schema. That's where we look for them. Our national graceful gray crown crane. One time I was somewhere in North America and I saw a bird similar to this, which they called an Eastern Meadowlark, ours is known as the yellow-throated longclaw. Incidentally, their calls are almost the same. This is one of the bush shrikes known as the black-headed gonolek. We've got several kinds of stocks in Uganda. Some of them feed or live, inhabit the water areas, and some inhabit savanna. And this is one of those that fish or look for food in the water. And this is the yellow bill stock. We've got various kinds of lapwings. This is one of them, the Senegal lapwing. That's one beautiful bittern that likes hiding in the papyrus, but with uh, an eagle eyed Johnny, you may not miss it. Remember, where we go bird watching in our national parks, you are looking at birds and different other creatures like the leopards, lots of elephants, lions and stuff. And so it's one country that amazed uh, Winston Churchill and he called it the Pearl of Africa for that reason. This is one of the smaller sized boats that I was talking about that we the bird watchers tend to use so that we are by ourselves to enjoy our birding. We have two kinds of um, pelicans like this pink park pelican. And then we have the great white, the malachite kingfisher that I talked about that lives next to the water compared to the blue breasted that lives only in the forest. We've got purple heron, open-billed stalk, 
don't call it open winged stock, it was just drying up. It's known as the open bill stock. We've got lots of uh, crocodiles on the Nile and here on this water body that joins um, Lake Edward to Lake George. If you want, I would show it to you on the map right here. This is Lake Edward and so you would be there. And so that's where we do our boat cruise on, it's called Kazinga Channel, heading to Lake Edward. As soon as we enter the mouth of Lake Edward, that's where the boat turns back and you head back to your accommodation. It's a two hour boat cruise compared to the three hour boat cruise on the River Nile in Machison. We have a very elegant looking mammal known as the Uganda Cobb which you would love to see. And I believe the cameras would be clicking. We have various kinds of larks. This is a rufous crowned lark. And we have various kinds of larks. Different kinds of uh, bubblers. This is the black lord bubbler. We have arrow marked, we have brown. In Uganda, in Queen Elizabeth in particular, Queen Elizabeth has got two sectors, the Northern sector and the Southern sector known as uh, Kishasha. They are nice fig trees with huge flat branches. So Kishasha is popular for its tree climbing lions. And that's where several people tend to go looking for the tree climbing lions. Although we know that most cats, if not all, are able to climb, but they will be climbed areas or trees that are favorable to why they want to climb. So because these fig trees have got big flat branches, they help them from running away uh, from the flies. And then they use them as vantage points for hunting. So they prefer in that area where you find, because they are in different parts. So we go driving here and there if we are looking for them. That's in the Southern sector of Queen Elizabeth, known as the Shasha sector. So I said earlier that people tend to come looking for the African schema. This photograph tells you that you wouldn't miss them. This is still on Kazinga channel, where you see them in their hundreds. And you know, you will be able to find creatures like these as well during your game drives. When they go feeding during the rainy season and they find small paddles, then they think about staying there rather than walking back kilometers to the main water bodies. And so you are able to find them there. And um, I would want to take you down to another popular national park known as Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. Although I call it Bwindi Impenetrable, but Penetrable National Park. You remember the forest I showed you earlier that uh, you go tracking the gorillas? That's the Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. And that is still Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. And so that's where we are right now. It is one sm small park, as you can see it there, of 331 square kilometers. And uh, it has got varied habitat, which it is uh, one of the or oldest uh, forests in Uganda. And it inhabits, so it's a home to different birds, about, I still say 350 plus, because I'm one of the people that have uh, discovered four new species for the country. So I still believe that in Bwindi, there are some other birds that have never been discovered in Bwindi. And so that's why I say 350 plus different species in a small park of 331 square kilometers. But Remember I said Uganda has got only one endemic, but in Bwindi, there are what we call 
Albertine Rift endemics. These are the birds that you will find only in the Albertine Rift region. And uh, one of them is the Rigo sunbird that you see here. That black bird is not just black, but it's an Albertine Rift endemic known as the yellow-eyed black flycatcher. In this nest here, if you look carefully there, you will see a green bird sitting there, the grower's broadbill or African green broadbill is one of the birds that every bird watcher wants to see, like the shoebill, the dinosaur that I showed you earlier. It is found in Windy. The dusky crimson wing is another Albertine rift endemic. Um, the Renzoria palis, popularly known as the Black Colada palis, is an Albertine rift endemic. The red faced woodland warbler is an Albertine rift endemic. Archer's robin chart is an Albertine rift endemic. Striped breasted teeth is an Albertine rift endemic. Strange weaver is an Albertine rift endemic. Renzori batis is an Albertine rift endemic on this slide. And then we have got this, excuse me, the fine banded woodpecker also found in Bwindi. It was split, it used to be known as toolbags woodpecker. And then they found that the West African one doesn't have fine bands like the Ugandan one. So ours became fine banded woodpecker but you know the lumping and splitting, probably one day they will lump it again. And this is the brown-throated waterline. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just on this slide. And uh, you are likely to see these 10 in just an evening, for example, at one of the sectors in Bwindi called Rohija because Bwindi has got four sectors where people go for gorilla tracking, and that's where we go bird watching as well. So Ruhija sector, you are able to see these birds in one day, in one evening. Now, Bwindi is one national park in the world, at least according to what I know, where you find chimpanzees, and the gorillas living in the same national park. I don't think there's any other place that anyone knows where chimpanzees and mountain gorillas live together, which makes it special again. But that does not mean that they are the only birds that you find in Windy. Lots of more beautiful birds are found there. Now, this is the Grower's Broadbill the African green bird bee I showed you in the nest. One beautiful bee eater again, which was not named right according to me. It's called black bee eater. I believe several of you would have given it a different name. We've got two different trogons. I love trogons as well. And uh, we've got Narina trogon and Bartel trogon. And this one is the Bartel trogon. We've got different kinds of turacos. This is the great blue turaco, and that is black bill turaco. And uh, both of them are forest species, but then the great blue turaco will move out of the forest and you can see it somewhere else. We've got uh, 36 different weavers. And this is one of those weavers I showed you earlier in Albert and Rift Endemic, the strange weaver. This one again, I don't think was named right. It's called black billed weaver. I would have called it probably yellow faced weaver, if you agree with me. Those who know Oreos, this is not an Oreo and it's not an, a weaver. It's one beautiful small bird known as an Oreo finch because it looks like an Oreo and it is a finch, they decided to join the names and it's called Oreo finch. There are 
various kinds of uh, owls. This is the African wood owl. We've got 34 different uh, sunbirds. I showed you the Rigo sunbird earlier. There's one that tends to look almost close to it. This is the variable sunbird. We've got various kinds of flycatchers. And these two almost look alike, but this is African blue flycatcher. And this is white-tailed blue flycatcher. The African blue flycatcher is found in most of the part of the country. But this one is a regional endemic that you will only find in the south. Um, that's the Rigo sunbird. If you want to see it bigger, that's the Archer's robin chart, one other Albertine Rift endemic. That's the Renzori batis. That's the bigger sized African blue flycatcher, just in case. And then I take you faster to. Mugahinga Gorilla National Park, which has got some of the Albertine Rift endemics as well. This is one of them, the handsome Francolin, which you see in wind as well, but you see it at Mugahinga as well. This is the other Albertine Rift endemic, the Renzori Turaco, which I have seen in Bwindi, but easily seen at Mugahinga. We have 25 green bulls, this is one of them. We earlier saw the joyful. This is the yellow whiskered green bull. Dusky turtle dove easily seen up at Mugahinga. We've got two thrushes, African thrush, and this is the Abyssinian thrush. For a long time, it used to be known as an olive thrush. This is one tiny bird that has no tail, the crombeck, which is white browed crombeck, and that's the strange weaver that I showed you earlier in a bigger sized uh, motion. But um, Mugahinga, again, is a nation, another national park where you will go to see mountain gorillas. There are golden monkeys there as well, which are habituated, and you can go see them as well. But we have various other mammals there, like elephants, buffaloes, bush pigs, and several others. Usually in Uganda, there's a way God gave it to us that our trips take you to a national park. You are in a Jeep with a roof opening up. And when you move from the Jeep in the savannah, you do the, the stretching of the legs in the forest. Then from there, you go back to the savannah and then to the forest. And so now we move from Queen Elizabeth to Windy to Mugahinga, which is a forest where we do the walking and straight the legs. And then I will take you to the savannah again, where we, we will be back in the jeeps. But this is one interesting savannah national park that you can do walks as well with uh, an armed ranger. But before we get there, Mugahinga is probably the smallest, which is 33.9 square kilometers, but it has got 115 different bird species and 76 different mammals. And then Windy has got 120 different mammals, although most of them are small forest mammals. Right, back to our national park, the last one, which is Lake Mburo. It's a savanna park with different water bodies, but the main water body that we tend to visit is this one, where it got its name, Lake Mburo. We have different babets there, different kinds of birds, but we have special ones that we go looking for in Lake Mburo. One of them is this, the red-faced babet. That's where you only find it. Crested Babbitt, brown chested lapwing. We have got uh, African uh, finfoot. I'll show it to you on the next slide, probably. And then we have several other birds like spot flank Babbitt, this small parrot known as the red faced lovebird. We still have other kinds of uh, 
be it as because in Uganda, you might be able to get like five different be it as as you move. So this is the blue cheeked be eater. We have various kinds of cisticolas, and this is one of them, the trilling cisticola, but there are lots of different ones. Black faced wax bill, and another night bird known as the African scopes owl. Now, you remember as we bird in Uganda, we see several other creatures. We have mammals in Lake Mbura as well, known as Topi, Impala, which is different from the Uganda cop that I showed you earlier. Of course, the hippos on the lake. And this is the African finfoot. That is one of the birds that takes us to Lake Mburo to look for, because you get it while on a boat cruise. This is a Franklin or Sparfall, redneck Sparfall that you find in the southern parks like Queen Elizabeth and Lake Mburo. Yellow bill stock, of course. Gray backed Camaroptera, which I'm listening to calling outside my window here. <laughs> Sparwing goose. African fish you go. I showed you earlier uh, a black headed monolek. The December, I'm not sure I, the, if the sound is coming from you. Please mute your mic. And uh, this one is a papyrus guela again, like I showed you the blue headed kukal. This is a papyrus gonolek that you only find in the papyrus. I don't know which found a problem with evolution or which one was lucky with evolution because you see they almost look alike, red underneath, black above, but this one has got uh, a yellow crown and a pure white vent. And so you will only find it in uh, the papyrus. Uh, that's the bigger version of the red faced babbit that you only find in Lake Muro, bigger version of the crested babbit. Now, when we are traveling, we definitely, it becomes morning and it becomes evening and then we have to sleep. And so I thought I would show you some of the lodges that we tend to use. This is where is up in Machison known as uh, Para Safari Lodge, but there are various lodges up there. And this is one of the rooms, the double room. And this is a twin room with two beds. As you can see, they are both overlooking the Nile. This one is in Queen Elizabeth. One side it overlooks Lake Edward. The other side it overlooks Kazinga Channel, which is over there. And again, this is one of the rooms, the double room, and this is the twin room overlooking Kazinga Channel over there. And then I thought I'd show you another one. And we have different kinds of lodges. Some uh, have got blocks with various rooms together, like you see this one. But this one has got different cottages. So you go to your cottage, you are by yourself there. And we've got various kinds like that. And this is a twin room again with two beds there overlooking Bindi Forest over there. And this is the dining overlooking Bindi Forest there again. And interestingly in Bindi, the mountain gorillas sometimes tend to come to visit uh, some of the lodges, but it's no guarantee just to let you know that you are usually not far from the gorillas, but they don't have permanent homes. And so you may walk for 30 minutes or four hours looking for them or even more, but that shouldn't scare you. There's a way we do it that you, we know you paid to see the gorillas and we will make sure you go, you get to them. We will tell you to exercise so that you come when you are fit because we want you to get to them. And so, yeah, these are the kinds of accommodations that we take you. This is the outside of the dining. 
So the smaller lodges, you find them, for example, with eight cottages or 10 cottages, but the bigger lodges will have even 100 plus rooms. Onwards and upwards, we do not walk from Entebbe to Mabamba or from Entebbe to Murchison or Queen Elizabeth or Windy. And so I thought I'd show you the kind of wheels that we use to move you from place to place. Like I said earlier, they all have pop-ups so that you are able to stand up, see whatever you want to see easily. As you can see, take four uh, photographs while you are standing, or if you want, you can see it and use the windows. For example, we call this one a three-seater because we only count windows for clients. So that's one window, one window here and one window on the other side. This is a five-seater, one window here, one window there and on the opposite side, and then this window and on the opposite side. This is slightly longer than this, which is a seven-seater. They all have charging points, real electricity, 240, so you don't have to run out of battery that to miss a photograph. When one battery runs out, you are able to charge. They have uh, refrigerators. You go drinking your water, not beers, of course. We put their water so that you can have your beer when you get back to the lodge. And um, we have got what we call Ankole Longhorn Kato, which everyone gets amazed to see. And this is usually as you go into Lake Mburu as you come out, and then you hear cameras clicking and clicking and clicking. And uh, when we get to this, we get to our last slide and it becomes the end. And I want to thank you very much and uh, to thank you a lot and looking forward to seeing you in Uganda. Thank you very much. And uh, in case you want to get the contacts, they are also here. And uh, when you look for Johnny Gamish, of course, you will find the contacts. I thank you very much. I thank ABF. I thank Mike Lou. I thank Victor Yu, I thank Andrew, Sebastian, and all my friends that I, I actually tend to use the word clan mates or tribe mates, all the bird watchers, I call ourselves clan mates. If I may use an example of smokers, I don't smoke, but when a smoker meets a smoker, they become brothers and you know they will share the cigarette. That's how I look at us as bird watchers. So I thank all my tribe mates that I've met all over the world that I travel. And I beg that we remain clan mates and tribe business. Whenever we meet, we share as much as we can. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Johnny. It's just You're welcome. incredible. You're welcome. Really incredible. And I know there are so many questions to be asking to you. So uh, who's going to ask first? I know there's a lot of questions. Waiting for them. Yep. And uh, uh, maybe. Uh, me, uh, uh, shall I talk? Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Kusum from Sri Lanka. Yeah, we've met before. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Johnny, just tell me how long will it take to go to all the places you showed? Now, we have designed itineraries, and yeah. they vary from 14 days, 18 days, 21 days. But we design itineraries basing on the client. If you tell us you have 10 days, we will advise you on the parks, on the places that you can visit. We will tell you what you are likely to see so that you pick what you want to see. And then we base the itinerary on that. And then when you go on the website, actually, the itinerary is to guide you. You can pick one of them 
or pick from several and ask us to redesign to get to what you want. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, um, again, I think I want to know about the, the weather condition. Tinga, you may go ahead with your question. Oh, sorry. I think uh, it was already answered that it's generally, generally tropical. So what is the temperature range? And where is when is the coolest time to go? The temperature range, like I said earlier, is uh, between 18 and 28. And uh, the weather has changed all over the world, and it has happened in Uganda as well. So it's no longer like it used to be. I remember it used to start raining on my birthday, which is 15th of August. It doesn't happen that way anymore. So our dry season used to be from mid-December to March, and then June, July, August. And then the other months used to be rainy seasons. So we still base it on that, but it varies. And uh, it, even if you talk of the heat, it is warm during the day and cool at night. And then when you are in places like Bwindi, Chibale, uh, Mugahinga, you might need uh, a fleece because it gets cold there. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, Johnny. Hi. Hi. I'm Andy from Malaysia. I have yes. two questions for you. My, my first question is very easy. What yeah. is your official language in Uganda? Yes. The second you one is... That? Okay, you can go to the first one. We actually don't have a national language. And the official language is what I'm using right now, which is English. Oh. <laughs> 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 Don't you speak the native language or, or something? I actually speak uh, 12 different languages in Uganda. We have over 27 different languages and about 33 dialects. So in any part of the country, when I'm with you, I'm able to communicate, I'm able to hear and understand what they are speaking and I will tell you exactly what they are saying in any part of the country. Wow, great. Uh, Okay, my second question is, how is the security in the country? And also when we are moving in the park, do we, let's say we are walking around, is it safe if we walk in the savannah, the elephant, the tiger, or the, the leopard may attack us? <laughs> Any possibility? Now, this, Uganda is one of the safest countries in the world. That is one. Two, Uganda is the most welcoming in the world. I can use a witness called Victor Yu. You will have to go to the gym to practice so that when you come, you wave all the time. Your hand will be waving as we are driving. Now, that is part of the security of the general country. In the Savannah, I gave only one national park when, where you can walk, and that is Lake Mburo National Park. You walk with a ranger, of course, you are extra careful because there are buffaloes there. Usually that is the main problem. And so we walk in open areas where we can see where we are going. The other savannah parks, you are not allowed to walk. You do it in the vehicles that I showed. The, that's why the roofs go up so that you are able to see whatever you want to see. You can only come out at designated areas for a wee, for example where it is open and you're able to see a wide angle. And of course, if you go walking or if you want, you go with an armed ranger so that if you want to <coughs> do something, you walk with that ranger. Okay, thank you. My last question for you. Yes, How sir. long does it take for us to move from one park to another? That means if you are bad, wa if you are bad watching, it's not easy to tell but most of the roads are tar. I will give an example of one national park, which is Bwindi. Remember I said it has got four sectors. So when I'm budding from Buhoma to Ruhija, it's only 50 kilometers, but I do it the whole day. But anyhow, if you are driving nonstop, 
most of the parks, it's four, six hours between the parks. Of course, non-stop means stopping for a break, stopping for one special bird and stuff like that. Thank you. I love to come. Between the parks is usually 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers, 150, stuff like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Rajendra, any question? Hi, Johnny. I have a question. Quick question. Shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> uh, can you tell us uh, about the cost? Uh, because uh, I remember you, uh, you didn't mention about uh, the purse damage. <laughs> the what? The, the cost and um, yeah. uh, the yeah, recommended the uh, duration of um, the holiday, like, you know, average uh, duration you get uh, on your tours. Yeah, the cost, again, depends on the days you have and the activities you are going to do. You know, for example, some people don't want to see the chimpanzees, they want to see gorillas. Some don't even want to see the gorillas, but those are the few. But roughly $4,000 to $5,000, you are able to do a three weeks trip. But you know, that's, it could be even 4,500. Again, we discuss the accommodation because the accommodation vary and these give you different prices. If you go high, the price will go high. If you go to basic, it's a clean room, clean bed, more or less the same food, then the cost goes down. Uh, which is, uh, which is 4,500, 4, right? Yeah, like, yeah, even for less. Three, it could even a, be for a three week uh, For a three week tour? Trip, exactly. Right, okay. And does it involve uh, camping? And now, this, this again, based on the number of people on the trip. Right, okay. And what is yeah, the, so the minimum like number of people? If you are four, the cost won't be the same like if you are six because there are things that you'll be sharing. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. And that uh, average uh, number of uh, species, like uh, birds in, and uh, as well as three mammals? Weeks? Yes, in, in three, three weeks. weeks. Yes. Three weeks, you, I, I, I can tell you, you are likely to get between, depending on the season, five, 500, 550 to 600 bird species. Right. Because I have done, I think, 619 bird species in three weeks. Wow. Yeah. That's about uh, the total number of species found in Bhutan. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> what about the mammals? Sorry. Last question, please. Uh, the mammals are uh, between 30 and uh, 50 different mammals because off my head, I can even give you 30 different mammals that you can see in three days. So you can see that you are likely to get more than that. Wow, exciting. Thank you very much. Much, much <laughs> the button. So what, what, what's the total species of birds in, in Uganda? Uh, 1,700, sorry, 1,070 plus, because we are still discovering new birds. So right now it's like 1,076. Okay. Yep, I've discovered four new species for the country, so we are still finding new birds. Cool. Uh, are there uh, low season and, and high season of visitors? Yes. Uh, uh, June, July, August, September is the high season. And then part of December and January. And then the rest of the seasons, it's uh, quiet. Okay, so, so it's like a rainy season, the less people there. Yeah. Yeah, but when you talk about but, the rainy I wouldn't season... Say, I wouldn't say that because it's usually based on the holidays back in Europe and in the US, summer holidays. Oh, That's yeah. when people travel to Uganda. Okay. Yeah. But when you talk about rainy season, but does it mean that it, it, it rains all day long or just... No, 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 no. Even in the rainy season, you, you will be surprised that you may get one day raining and then the rest of the days it rains at night and you are birding the whole day or it rains in the morning and the rest of the day you are birding and then you don't get any, any disruption. That's great, great. Yeah. Johnny, uh, one more. Yeah, and yes, yes, 17 hours. 
in the three weeks tour, like you've mentioned, how many parks can we go to? Uh, Magison, Queen Elizabeth, Chivale, Bwindi, Lake Mburo, yeah, about five parks. Oh, it's almost all. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, half of them. <laughs> okay. But you see, we, with those five parks, you have other places that you're going to visit that are not parks. Ah. But we include them because of the special birds that are there. Okay. Yeah. And, and Johnny, my friend Lisa would like to see Settle Bill. So are they coming? Settle Bill in stock. Canada? Yeah, are they Settle coming? Stock. Settle Bill stock, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She will see that. Easy to see, or the, I mean, they, are they common or uh, difficult? Yeah, they to... are common. They are common. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, so Ixi has a question. Ixi, Ixi, yes, please. Yeah, go um, ahead, Ixi. Yeah. Hi, Johnny. It's me, Ixi. Hi. Hello. You mentioned some. You mentioned something about exercise and then that victor you have to exercise so how fit does one have to be to join one oh. of your tours oh no the exercise i meant to wave at people ah. because they are coming they're always waving That's at you, what you mean. okay okay <laughs> yes. so, but but i still have a question but, but, how but fit, yeah how fit Sorry? should you be no i mean it, it's, it's not you physical are able to walk challenging Sorry? Yeah. It, it, it's not challenging at all. If you are able to walk, uh, for example, two hours nonstop, mm -hmm. that means you are able to do anything because when you are bird watching, you uh -huh. walk for 10 strides, you stop. You look at this bird, That's look at right. that, and, that. And as you are doing the 10 strides, you don't know that you are walking. That's right. That's right. The whole yeah. day, you find yourself covering three kilometers. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the only exercise is if you wanted to do mountain gorillas, but still you don't have to go to the gym. It's just practicing to walk up and down the stairs yeah. so that your legs are able to do it and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey. Rajendra. Yeah, go ahead, Rajendra. Okay. Good evening, good morning, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> hey, thank you, Johnny, for getting us to in your beautiful yeah, country, Uganda, the virtual tour in your country. We really, <laughs> really enjoyed it, especially being in the room, because right now, when I'm in Nepal, um, all the, the travel movement has been restricted. So basically, yeah. being inside the room, it's really gave me a fresh, you know? Uh -huh in my imagination. <clears throat> um, I have a couple of questions for you. Yes. Um, number one is, I uh, know it's very nice, all the hotels and uh, everything is very nice. It's all yeah. depending on the pockets, right? All the wallets exactly. where you want to sleep, right? Yeah. All these uh, five-star hotels with the swimming pool or the nice and clean lodges all depends on the pockets. And I think we got the all the prices, uh, the tentative prices uh, that uh, our colleague Shubsang has already asked you and you mentioned <laughs> weather conditions, everything, yeah? <laughs> we got it. Um, I have a something, it might be funny questions for you. You know that the Shafari Jeep that you had it, you know, whether yeah. that Jeep was a company made it or you just uh, like a tailor, I mean, you made it yourself afterwards. <laughs> Shafari no, Jeep. They are there are workshops that build them, but uh, there's one that I, uh, I drew the photograph myself. I designed it myself because mm. I knew what I wanted and how I wanted it to look like. So I took it to the workshop and they built it for me because they had never mm. built anything like that. The one that was uh, left below the five seater, they had never built anything like that. So I drew, I designed it and took it for them and they built it. But there are workshops that specialize in doing that. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Because um, um, we don't have any sort of uh, that vehicle in, I believe, in Asia. Not sure mm. in India. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that not in Bhutan too. Uh, 
Uh, we don't have that in Nepal too, but just something that could be very good uh, innovation for our birding tours in the future. So that's what I was um, interested on to run the trips in the future. Maybe Chupsang, you can also think about it. I'll I will send you. <laughs> yes, send uh, you. yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the. Uh, I will send yeah. you different yeah. angles of the photographs of the vehicles, and uh, you will be yeah. able to see the difference. Yes, because, please. Uh, uh, please include in the uh, include in the chat here underneath. Yeah, that would be great because I like the you know the way you do it in in all over Africa, not just Uganda, right? I've seen this yeah, yeah, yeah. similar uh, you know the, mm, infrastructure in uh, you know in all over yeah, Africa. In Tanzania, <clears throat> you'll find them in Kenya, in Rwanda now, in South yeah. Africa, and as you can see, they are Japanese vehicles. They are Toyota Land Cruiser. Very but strong, even, yeah. even when the people from Toyota Japan come and look at them, they can't figure <laughs> out how we did it. <laughs> no, I'm not joking, Victor. People have been brought from Toyota Japan yes. to come and see if they can make uh, the sashi, the frame, so that we don't have to cut to join. But they still can't figure out how it is <laughs> redesigned to have that shape, especially the long one. They must hire you. Uh, <laughs> wait, uh, and, and McKinney has a question. Yes. Yes, um, yes. I don't know if this was mentioned earlier, but from where are we supposed to land? Like, where do what, we fly into? What airport? What what city? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. You land. You land at Entebbe International Airport. Entebbe. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And that's the only airport. We, that's the only international airport we have. Okay. okay. And then another question, Chubsang asked this, but I didn't hear the answer. Is there camping? Uh, there is yeah. camping, but I, 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 I don't do camping, unfortunately. Okay, okay. 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 That's great. Thank you. It's dangerous to okay. camping in, in Uganda. <laughs> right. Are there more questions? No. If there's no further questions, uh, I let's take a group photo. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't have a questions, but I would like to just share some uh, information. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know how many of us know that the, tomorrow is the September first Saturday, which is International Vultures Awareness Day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. It started two thousand nine in from South Africa, and now it's been a, you know they're expanding all over the world. So the country where there's a lots of vultures or that there used to be, and then the number has been declining as they started mm -hmm. to celebrate, as you all know that uh, <clears throat> South um, Asia, particularly India and Nepal, and of course in the Bhutan is uh, our part there, um, as of this uh, couple of uh, species, the Gips family, white drum vultures, slender vultures are, highly declining is something like somewhere 90 percent uh, over 90 percent are declining and uh, there was, has been a huge effort to save those vultures in asia um by you know that the, the banning this a harmful drug called uh, diclofenac it is a huge effort yes. and uh, you know nepal is one of the uh, success uh, country to remove all the drugs and also we have been um, successfully breed you know the captive breed and now uh, also released into the wild so tomorrow um it's internationally a lot of uh, countries where they have a vultures they are celebrating the RNS campaign yeah mm -hmm. so like nepal you know the due to this um, the present uh, situations what we are doing is we are also doing some uh, presentation um about the vulture crisis in Asia. And that the talk is going to be given by one of our specialists from the UK. His name is Chris Belden. And he is actually critical. Um, uh, actually, let me see his post. He's a, he's a globally threatened species uh, um, officer and also the SAVE, one of this uh, group of uh, saving the vultures called SAVE vultures. So he's the manager at RSPV. So he's going to be giving us a talk at 1 
a.m. Uh, sorry, 1 p.m. tomorrow at Nepal time. So if any of you are interested to know about that, just send me a message and I can send you uh, the um, link to join if the time fits you to know about the Asia's vultures. Uh, and then a similar, uh, and afterwards, what we're going to do is we are also going to launch the, the vultures ebook about the Nepal, and uh, that will be, I'll be sharing you with you later on. So that's all I want to share with you all. Yeah. So at last, I would like to thank you, Avi Asim. Thank you, our hero, Mr. You, Victor, Mike Lou, Andrew, and all the AVF team, and of course, my colleagues from all over the world. Hey, thank you, Johnny. It was um, wonderful. Thank you, Japan, Bishkas, Bhutan, and all over the Thank place. you very much, Rajendra. Thank you. thank you. This is all I would say. Yeah, thank you. Namaste. So it's time to take a group photo, guys. So uh, please turn on your camera. Yes. Yes, we'd like to see everybody. Uh, some of the guys are still hiding. <laughs> <laughs> At least the shy one is not. We saw, okay, okay. <laughs> Hi, babies and Cho and some of the guys are still hiding. Hmm. Okay. Well, sure. all right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. okay. So once again, look at the camera, smile, and do not move. Okay. Okay. Three. Oh, okay. Who's coming? Is, is Carol coming? <laughs> Seems to be. Coming? Okay. Let's do it right now. Okay. okay. One. Two, three, go. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you, Johnny, for the great presentation. Thank we you. We want to go to Uganda. No, our speaker for next week will be from Cambodia. Excellent. Uh -huh. mm. <laughs> we'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> we're there. We're there. We're we're there. <laughs> okay, have a nice weekend. You too. Yeah. Same to you, uh, everyone. Have a nice bye, day. Bye. 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 Bye